This content's going to include, but not be limited to, how I set up my Mossberg 500 with a complete parts list, along with a short conversation about a couple issues that you might want to consider if you're thinking about owning a shotgun like this. Then I'm going to wrap it up with my personal overall observations on this firearm. I'm going to start off by saying that I'd consider a shotgun to be one of the most important long guns in anybody's collection. They're extremely versatile. They can be used for situations from home defense to hunting, depending on the load and the barrel length. Exotic ammunition can offer you the ability to do things like starting a fire using a round like Dragon's Breath. You could bring down a drone using a net launching anti-drone round. There are armor piercing rounds, not to mention non-lethal alternatives that are filled with things like rubber balls, pepper spray, bean bags, and rock salt and even a flare round for rescue purposes. A shotgun can fill many roles, and I often suggest that a shotgun be someone's first long gun due to its versatility, cost, ease of use, and ease of maintenance, and the aftermarket availability of parts depending on the make and model. Alright, with that being said, next I'll run through a quick parts list on this Mossberg 500. Then I'll backtrack and go over specific upgrades in detail and explain why I utilize them and the things that I considered when I was choosing this setup. Starting up front, you can see I have an HFD2 door breech device. Right behind that device, I have a GG&G QD sling mount. Above that mount, I have a snap-on green True Glow fiber optic front sight. Behind that, I have a polymer vented heat shield installed. Moving rearward, I have an STAC shotgun card holding some of my onboard ammo. Behind the ammo card, there's a Brownells anti walk trigger housing pin. On the top of the shotgun, I've replaced the polymer safety lever with a ProMag metal safety lever with an aftermarket straight slot screw. Right behind the trigger is a long arm extended release lever that I purchased from Shoten Armory. The stock adapter is a Mesa Tactical Adapter. It has a BCM Mod Zero 65 degree angle grip. That BCM grip has a small piece of inner tube installed on top of it. Behind the adapter I have a basic mil-spec buffer tube with a M4 style buttstock that has a Missouri Tactical recoil pad on it. On the right hand side of the shotgun I've got a Peraz Designs detachable two round shotgun card with some additional onboard ammo. The first product that I'm going to discuss in detail is the HFD2 door breaching device. This device gets mounted directly on the magazine tube end cap with six set screws and some red Loctite. Not only does this thing look wicked but it actually helps you remove your barrel. Due to the fact that it gives you a little bit more real estate to manipulate while you're trying to loosen your end cap. And if your end cap's really tight, you can actually utilize the holes in this device by sliding an Allen wrench through them and using that for leverage. They make this product in two different sizes, the extra large like the one shown here, and a smaller version for the 500s with the extended magazine tubes. The only issue that I could foresee with a product like this would be that if you're utilizing a scabbard for transport, the sharp teeth on this could get hung up while you're trying to insert the shotgun. Next is going to be the anti-rotational QD sling mount. Over the years I've used many GG&G products and I've always found them to be a high quality trustworthy company. I typically try to set up all of my long guns with the same sling setup so I can utilize one sling across many different long guns. This product helps me accomplish that. The True Glow fiber optic front sight was by far the easiest upgrade on this build. It only took a moment to install. It's extremely visible and easy to acquire. It's a simple design that just works and it stays in place. If lost or damaged, it's really not that big of a deal. As far as the heat shield, I have to admit that I find this upgrade to be a bit unnecessary. It was a fairly cheap upgrade. 
I think it gives the shotgun an aggressive look. I went with the polymer version just because I didn't want any metal on metal damage to my barrel. But I will say this about aftermarket heat shields. I did come across some research that indicated that a heat shield could actually cause malfunction in a pump action shotgun. An improperly installed heat shield or one that's just poorly manufactured the rear ring where it snaps onto the barrel can interfere with the action while you're racking the gun not letting the action make its complete rearward movement and in turn causing ejection problems so that's just a little FYI most people will not look at their heat shields when they're having ejection problems before I go any further, I wanted to take a moment to say a few words about the forend on this firearm. At one point, I had upgraded the forend on this one to an Ergo 3 railed forend. And something I didn't take into consideration before I bought that forend was that when you see one of those mounted on a shotgun, you can actually see the gap between the magazine tube and the barrel. And what that actually creates is an excessive amount of rotational play in that forend when it's mounted. I found it totally unacceptable. I actually preferred this forend to that 65 hour ergo forend. Uh, if you look at this one or even the Magpul version, at some point when you go to twist those in your hand, they actually make contact with the barrel and it stops them from rotating. But the ergo, there's so much gap there, it's almost like you feel like the bars are going to break. It was just very unacceptable. So there's something to take into consideration when you're looking to upgrade your forehand. Moving on to how I chose to carry my ammo on this gun. Choosing this ammo carry option was a large portion of the research that I did on this build. Everything else was basically cosmetic. Choosing how you carry your ammo on a shotgun almost falls into the philosophy of use category. Ask 10 people how to carry shotgun ammo and how to load a side saddle and you'll get 10 different answers. Here's my answer. First I chose to utilize the card method with the thought that I could carry a couple spare cards in a large pouch and quickly strip off an old one and replace it with a full one with very little thought or effort. Secondly, I prefer to tilt my shotgun up into my workspace to reload, which determined the orientation of my rounds and my ammo card. The one facing down is getting loaded directly into the barrel over the top. The other five are going up into the tube from the bottom. And orientating in this fashion means less manipulation of the shell while reloading. So with a full magazine tube, one in the barrel, two spare cards, and two slugs in the smaller card, I can have 26 rounds quickly on hand until I would have to refill or reload out of a drop open shell pouch or a bandolier. The Brownells Anti-Walk Trigger Housing Pin. There are a couple different options for anti-walk trigger housing pins. And since I really didn't care whether my screw head was flat or hex head, I decided to go with the Brownells flathead option for a third of the price over the hex head version sold other places. It does what it's supposed to do, comes from a reputable company. For eight dollars, I thought it was worth it. Earlier I mentioned that I'd be discussing a couple issues that I considered to be important to anyone thinking of purchasing a Mossberg 500 and the safety is going to be the first one of these issues. During my research, I discovered that the OEM polymer safety can possibly move during heavy use of this firearm, most likely while you're racking the slide, making it engage and cause malfunction. There are many possibilities to the cause of this malfunction, which could include a possible compressed detent spring, the detent ball not seating fully into the metal shim under the polymer lever, foreign material in the detent ball and spring mechanism impeding its movement or the polymer safety lever itself in some fashion. The general consensus among all the research that I've seen is that replacing your polymer safety lever with a metal version will rectify these issues in most situations. 
I replaced mine with the Pro Mag extended version. It works just fine, seems to have a very positive engagement, and takes what I would consider to be an acceptable amount of force to manipulate. I would highly recommend that anybody that owns or is considering purchasing a Mossberg 500 series shotgun that has the polymer safety to consider this upgrade so that you could avoid any kind of unwanted stoppages. The Shoten Armory long arm release lever makes it possible to manipulate your slide assembly without breaking your grip on the shotgun. I think this product is more suited for a pistol grip setup like the one shown here and not so much for a traditional stock setup. Its placement makes it extremely intuitive to use. The installation of this is a little bit involved, but Shoten Armory has a detailed video that I would suggest that you utilize if you're interested in this product. When it comes to attaching a collapsible stock to a Mossberg 500, there are many options available. Uh, I had four reasons why I chose the Mesa Tactical. First one being it had the option to choose whatever grip that you wanted to use. A lot of the options available would come pre-assembled with a grip that you could not swap out. Second, it had a QD sling mount, which I find useful. Third, I preferred the angle of the stock to be straight back from the receiver. Some of the other options tilt them down slightly, and that was definitely not my preference. The last thing was the way that the buffer tube attaches to the unit itself. A lot of the other options utilize a set screw method, which I did not prefer. This one actually has a setup that uses something that is more like an end plate on an AR-15. During my research into the Mesa Tactical Adapter, I came across some information that indicated if you were to use a traditional A2 grip that it actually creates a sharp angle where the grip and the adapter intersect and in turn creates a pinch point for the web of your hand during recoil. The BCM Mod Zero grip has a substantial vertical flat at the top which helps minimize this issue and the overall more vertical 65 degree angle reduces stress on your wrist and is more conducive to the squared off stance used in a defensive situation. I'm not a huge fan of M4 style buttstocks. I actually went with this setup just because of the recoil pad. When I was researching recoil pads for this build I came across this one produced by Missouri Tactical. It seemed to be the most substantial one I could find at the time, and I had this Tapco M4 style buttstock sitting around my shop for quite some time, so I decided to give it a shot. And I'm glad I did. It turned out to be an awesome combination, with a significant reduction in felt recoil. So much so that I actually put this same setup on another shotgun that I own. Now that I've gone over the parts list on this build, I wanted to take a moment to go over the second issue that I thought was important for anybody that was considering purchasing this firearm to be aware of. During my research into this shotgun, I came across some information that indicated if you were to drop this gun from as little as three feet or so, the elevator could become dislodged, fall inside the gun, and if you weren't aware that this happened and went to forcefully rack this shotgun, it could bind up to the point where it would be unusable. I've seen no indications that this happens during normal use of this firearm. So in my mind, this is a situation where a little bit of knowledge is power. If you drop your shotgun, the first thing you ought to do when you pick it back up is visually inspect those pins and make sure they're in place. If you do notice that this has occurred, I've seen some instances where individuals have jostled their slide back and forth very lightly to get these pins to reseat. In the end, the Mossberg 500 series shotguns are a time-tested quality firearm. 
really your creativity is the only thing that limits its potential. With a small amount of knowledge about this firearm's shortcomings, it can be utilized for any role that's necessary. That's going to conclude my content on the Mossberg 500 series shotgun. I hope somebody out there got something from it. Feel free to leave your questions and comments. Stay safe and God bless.